Welcome to a lesson on properties of exponents. In this lesson, we'll review the multiplication property of exponents as well as raising a power to a power. But let's begin by reviewing some basic exponent properties given here. First we have n raised to the first power. Remember the exponent tells us how many factors we have of the base. So here we have one factor of n which equals n. So any real number raised to the first power is always equal to the base. Next we have one raised to the power of n. Whenever we have a base of one raised to any exponent, it's always equal to one. Next we have n to the zero, where the base n is not zero. Whenever we have a non-zero real number raised to the zero power, it's always equal to one. And we'll try to justify this using a pattern in just a moment. Finally we have zero raised to the power of n, where the exponent n is not zero zero raised to any non-zero exponent is always equal to zero. But let's try to justify why n to the zero must equal one. Notice here we have powers of three. We start with three to the fourth and then each row the exponent decreases by one. Well three to the fourth is equal to eighty-one and notice how if we take eighty-one and divide by three which is equal to twenty-seven we get three to the third. Continuing this pattern, twenty-seven divided by three is equal to nine, which also equals three squared. Nine divided by three is equal to three, which equals three to the first, and therefore three divided by three, which equals one, must equal three to the zero. So here's some justification as to why n raised to the power of zero equals one, as long as the base doesn't equal zero. Of course, this pattern does continue. One divided by three equals one-third, which equals three to the power of negative one. So this pattern continues to work even for negative exponents. Now let's take a look at example one. Here we have five x to the zero. We need to be careful here because the exponent of zero is only attached to the x. This means five times x to the zero, where x to the zero equals one because we're told the base x doesn't equal zero. So this is equal to five times one, which equals five. Next we have the quantity two x plus one raised to the power of zero. We're told x doesn't equal negative one half, which would make our base zero. So we have a non-zero base raised to the zero power, and therefore this equals one. Here we're given that a, b, and c, the three bases, are not zero. So a to the zero equals one, b to the zero equals one, and c to the zero equals one, and therefore this simplifies to three. Now let's review the multiplication property of exponents. Let's take a look at it here in red. If we're multiplying in the bases of the same, we add the exponents. And let's take a moment and justify this. If we have x to the second times x to the third, we know x to the second is equal to two factors of x, x to the third is equal to three factors of x, and therefore this product is equal to x to the fifth. But instead of writing out each factor, notice how we could just add the exponents, giving us x to the fifth. So for n to the third times n to the ninth, because we're multiplying and the bases are the same, we add the exponents. So this is equal to n raised to the power of three plus nine, which equals n to the twelfth. Next we have b to the fifth times b to the fourth times b. b is the same as b to the first. So again, we're multiplying and the bases are the same. So we add the exponents. This is b to the power of five plus four plus one, which is equal to b to the tenth. Next we have five x squared y to the fifth times seven x y to the ninth. Let's include an exponent of one on the x. And now when we multiply, we'll first multiply the coefficients. Five times seven equals thirty-five. And then we have x to the second times x to the first. That's x to the power of two plus one. And then we have y to the fifth times y to the ninth. So we have y to the power of five plus nine. So this simplifies to thirty-five, x to the third, y to the fourteenth. Now let's review the exponent property when raising a power to a power. If we have a raised to the power of m raised to the power of n, or we have a power raised to the power, we multiply the exponents. This is equal to a raised to the power of m times n. And let's quickly justify this property as well. Let's say we had x to the second raised to the third. We know something is raised to the third power. We have three factors of the base shown here. 
So notice how here we have a total of six factors of x, and therefore this simplifies to x to the sixth. But a much shorter way to determine x to the sixth would be to simply multiply the exponents. Two times three gives us an exponent of six, which is the same as two plus two plus two. So going back to example three, here we have x to the third raised to the ninth. So because we have powers raised to powers, we multiply the exponents. This is equal to x raised to the power of three times nine, which is equal to x to the 27th. Next we have five b times five b to the fifth raised to the eighth. We first simplify the powers to powers. So we have five b to the second times b raised to the power of five times eight, that's 40. And now here we're multiplying and the bases are the same, so we add the exponents. So we have five b raised to the power of two plus 40, which is 42. Now next we have a rule for raising a product to a power. Here we have a b raised to the power of n is equal to a to the nth times b to the nth. This is just an extension of raising a power to a power, which we did above. Notice inside the parentheses, we have a to the first times b to the first raised to the nth. So here we are multiplying the exponents because we have powers to powers. So we're gonna go ahead and just reuse the same property we did above for the following examples. So here we have five x to the second, which is the same as five to the first, x to the first to the second. So because we have powers to powers, we multiply the exponents, so we'll have five raised to the power of one times two, or five squared, times x raised to the power of one times two, or x squared, and five squared equals 25. So this simplifies to 25 x squared. Next we have x to the third, y squared raised to the ninth. Again, we have powers to powers, so we multiply the exponents. Here we'll have x raised to the power of three times nine, and y raised to the power of two times nine. So this simplifies to x raised to the 27th and y raised to the 18th. Next we have negative eight a b to the fifth squared. We need to be careful because of this negative eight here. Let's write this negative eight in parentheses and then raise it to the first power and then a would also have an exponent of one. So again, because we have powers to powers, we multiply the exponents so we'd have negative eight in parentheses raised to the power of one times two, that's two. And then we'd have a raised to the power of one times two, which is two. And then we'd have b raised to the power of five times two, which is 10. And negative eight squared would be positive 64, so we have positive 64 a squared b to the 10th. Now let's take a look at our last two examples. Here we have five times negative two w to the seventh cubed. Again, because we have a negative factor here, we need to be careful. Let's put this negative two in parentheses, and this would be raised to the first. So because we have powers raised to powers, we multiply the exponents, so we'll have five times, we'd have negative two raised to the power of one times three, or three, and then w raised to the power of seven times three, which is 21. Negative two cubed is negative eight, so we have five times negative eight w to the 21st. So we have negative 40 w to the 21st. And then our last example, notice how we have five n to the fourth times negative three n cubed squared. So here we have a negative three, which is negative three in parentheses raised to the first n cubed squared. So we have powers to powers. So our first step, we have five n to the fourth times negative three to the power of one times two, which is two. And then we have n raised to the power of three times two, which is six. So simplifying, we have five n to the fourth times negative three squared, that'd be nine. So times nine n to the sixth. And five times nine is 45. n to the fourth times n to the sixth is equal to n to the power of four plus six, which would be 10. Okay, that's gonna do it for this lesson. I hope you found this helpful.